So our next presenter is Dee Dee Honor, and she is the Director of Employee Relations at, here at Calvin College. Has a lot of experience um, just in all areas of human resources, but um, also very interested and had a lot of experience talking about social media, using social media, kind of building your personal brand and how that can impact the job search. So um, welcome. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, one of my favorite things to do is to come talk to students, and I don't get to do it very much in my, my job anymore. Um, how many of you over the years have heard me speak? Have any of you, have I come to your classes? Because over the years I've come to um, a lot of engineering and a lot of English, and I've worked across the campus, so this will be all new information for you, which is great. Um, I have... Uh, before I came to Calvin, I worked in Southern California in the semiconductor industry, and I worked in high tech. And as I was telling Tarita and um, Carmelita, right, um, I, was, I wanted to be an engineer, but I was really bad at math. Um, so I decided just to keep an interest in it. And I have been writing and blogging. I own 15 different domains, and I write several different blogs, and have a pretty active social media presence some of which I'm gonna share with you today. Um, so one of the things that I do consistently across all of my social media platforms is I'm gonna have a consistent presentation. Can you see okay? All right, I don't wanna get in your way. You will know wherever you find me online that I work in HR, that I like to blog, that I'm a, a photographer wannabe. I'm not that great yet, but I've been practicing <laughs> for the last eight years. Um, I'm a social media fan, and no, I don't like Yik Yak, and I really don't like Ello, but you know, they, they keep, there are a lot of tools that keep coming out, and I try to stay on top of them. I have every kind of device imaginable. It's really a problem. Um, you will f also know that I'm a dog lover. I have a German Shepherd I rescued from the Humane Society through a program here at Calvin, and you will see Sans Samson across. He has his own Twitter presence. He has 700 or 800 followers. Um, and I'm also an anophile. Does anyone know what that means? I collect wine. And so anywhere you go, you will know that I collect wine and I have a wine cellar and I really love to write and talk and take pictures of wine. So anywhere you find me online, this is what you will find out about me. I have been talking about this since 2005 when I started talking to, to classes. Part of this is like before Twitter, when you had to have a .edu email address to get a Facebook account, and you had to have an invitation from somebody who had a Gmail account to get a Gmail account. That's how old I am. Well, actually, I'm older than that. I grew up with, um, well, some of you guys will know this, like we had to sit by the phone and wait for it to ring. We couldn't take our phones with us. Um, <laughs> but what I started to do was talk about, talk to job seekers and students about employers who were looking for them online. And one of the ways that we started to talk about an online presence was giving employers a place to go so that they knew where to find you rather than for them to go out and try and find you. Some of the consulting I do in the volunteer work, I was working with a woman who, um, as she was going through the job search, she wasn't getting interviews. And what we discovered, and I'll show you a website in a little bit, what we discovered is that she had the same name as a pornography star. And so one of the things that we worked on was helping her differentiate herself from the person who had the same name. And we did that with a middle initial and then putting up some um, online presence through blogging and some other things. We're gonna talk about two things. How many of you have ever heard of the, the deep web or the invisible web. Yay, yay. All right, um, the deep web or invisible web is information that's not indexed. And what that means, so depending on where you look, 0.03 to 0.04 percent of the information online is indexed. So when you search for information, you're getting a very, very small amount of information. And we'll talk about why this is important in a little bit. But part of it, where is it? Where is all the other information? Most of it is behind um, password protected. So like think social security or birth certificates or death certificates. Think about your electronic um, uh, student records. 
So all kinds of information that is behind either passwords or that is um, not indexed, they're standalone information, or they're available for a short period of time through subscription. That's a, an insane amount of information that's indexed. So if you think about all of the information that you get out, up when you search something online, you're getting a very small percentage. You're gonna wanna pay attention to your name and your information online as you get older. So I know uh, Tarita talked a little bit about um, interviewing, and I know next you're gonna talk about job search. So I'm gonna talk about what you should look for when you develop an online presence. So when employers look for you, some of the research that I've done suggests that employers will make, one in three employers will make an adverse employment decision based on something they find online. One in three employers. Now under the Fair Credit Reporting Act, what they're supposed to do is let you know that they've made that decision, and oftentimes they don't know that they're supposed to do that. And even if they did do that, if they knew they were supposed to, they, they may or may not. So one of the most important things for you to do is make sure you know what's said about you online. How many of you know about Justine Seiko? You guys know about this story? Oh boy, okay. So let me talk about Justine. Justine was um, Senior Director of Corporate Communications. She lived in, she lives or at the time lived in New York City. She, um, she had a really acerbic sense of humor, did a lot of, she was real active on Twitter, not a lot of followers, um, which plays into the story, but took a trip over Christmas to see her family in Johannesburg. So she flew from uh, New York City to, Johannes or to uh, London, and when she got to London, she put out this tweet. She made some reference to somebody sitting next to her who didn't smell good, and then she made this comment about cucumber sandwiches, bad teeth, back in London. Yeah, is it that offensive? Yeah, probably not. But right before the plane took off, she sent out this tweet. She shut off her phone, and the plane took off, and for the next 11 hours, she became the number one trending topic on Twitter. The entire time she was in the air, people were tweeting about Justine. And some of the tweets were this. In light of the disgusting tweet, this person is donating to At Care today. Some of them I, I can't post here. Um, one was, how did Justine Seiko get a PR job? And then this was her boss's comment on Twitter. Employee in question is currently unreachable on an international flight. When she landed in Johannesburg, there were people waiting for her at the airport. They took her picture and they posted it with the hashtag, Justine Seiko has landed. Her boss fired her. Uh, she lost her job, and this was the most um, telling tweet, is that your tweet lives on forever. So one of the most important things that I want you to think about as you are developing your brand, your presence online, is that whatever you put out there, your tweet, your Facebook post will live forever. Um, she's now part, she's subject of a book about, and I don't want to get into public shaming, but there's a book about public shaming, and she's one of the topics. And was, was all of that fair or not? How many of you remember, remember the dentist who killed Cecil the elephant, or the, the lion in Africa? So on Yelp, he's got a one-star review, and it has nothing to do with his dentistry, and they can't stay on it because people still um, give him really poor reviews because of his hunting. And, and that will live on forever, too. So a little, more clo a little closer to home. So this could be random picture off the internet. Um, the problem is it's not. This is a young friend of mine who was a student at the time this picture was taken. 
she was 20 and she a bunch of her friends went down to um, Florida for break and her friend took this picture and posted it publicly and tagged her. Um, so her 900 friends and her friends, 800 friends, everyone saw it, they're tagged. And then she uploaded it to Photobucket with her name attached to it. So every time you go to images.google.com and you type in her name, that picture comes up. So we're gonna talk about privacy and, and security and things that you're gonna wanna check on Facebook. So um, this is there forever. This tweet lives on, this picture lives on forever. So I had somebody ask me how to get the picture off the internet. What's the answer? Yeah, you can't. So, one of the things I always like to touch on the imprint material materials, the stuff that you do on that you do or that you do paper, um, your resume, your cover letter, your writing samples. How many of you keep your syllabus, your syllabi from classes? I would good. Good. Um, one of the things I would encourage you to do as you go through your career is not only keep copies of your syllabi from your classes because you will actually forget what you have studied. Um, I promise you that. Um, so keep those. But also as you go through your professional career, keep copies of your job descriptions because that will help remind you of the work that you did as you're promoted through your career. Um, the two things that I always keep, I keep my job description and I keep my performance evaluation. So that at, over the course of the, next, the previous year, I can look at what I've done and what I've accomplished. So keep those as you go through your, your, um, your career. Correspondence. So I did all the hiring at Calvin College for probably 14 years or so, staff, and supported some of the faculty hiring. Um, any English majors in here? English? No. Does anyone know who E.E. E. Cummings is? Okay. E.E. E. Cummings writes in all lowercase. And I can't tell you the number of people who would send me resumes and cover letters with like, like text language in the body of the email. Don't do that. I look at that and I think, huh, they're either E.E. E. Cummings or they don't know how to write a proper email. So make sure that anything you send to anyone remotely involved in hiring or decision making Make sure it's incredibly professional, that your correspondence, your project work, everything is really top notch. Because when you're looking at competitive hiring, it gets into the little things. When we get down to the top two, three, four, we're gonna start looking at the little things. And those things should be, should be spot on, should be really perfect. Okay, you guys got technology open? On? Okay, one of my favorite websites is a site, howmanyofme.com. Howmanyofme.com. And what, you know what, let me go there. Huh? Yeah, let me go there. For all of you guys who don't have technology. So howmanyofme.com is a website that will tell you, that searches the US birth records and will tell you how many people have your same name. So does anyone know Professor Holberg in English? Yeah? So um, she also, there's another Jennifer Holberg who's a pastry chef, and we decided that we wanted to know her. Um, if you look me up, this is really funny, there's less than one of me, which would not be bad. Uh, but statistically, I can't figure out how that's possible. Oh. oh, here's where it's old and really old, right? OK. Oh, didn't like that at all, did it? I wonder why it's not working. Tarita, let's use you. Maybe it doesn't like me. There are 11 or fewer people in the, in the US named Tarita Johnson. So have you guys looked it up? All right, how many? Three, one. 
Oh, that's awesome. Nobody will ever like, I wonder which one of the 390, <laughs> how many? Nine, 62, one. So that's good and bad, right? I mean, so the good is like we can control what people see. I mean, it's all, it, but it, the bad is it'll always be us, right? Yeah. Anyone not find their name? No? Okay. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to go back to how many of you know about Spokio? Anyone? I want to show you Spokio because this is another. Maybe it'll work for me this time. So Spokio is a search engine that will tell you um, personal demographic data about yourself. So what is really incredible about this site is when I pull up my name, that's my mother and my father and my brothers and that's my age and that's my address and that's where I we my husband was in the Navy and we lived in Montgomery and Monterey California and Norfolk Virginia and to pay money you can get actual addresses now here they have 60 now that's not nice I'm not quite there yet <laughs> really kind of annoying. Um, but what's amazing about this is the accuracy of the data and that if people want more, they can purchase it. So when you think about safety and security, um, this is one of those sites. And if you, so it pulls data from um, credit reports. And if you're not in there, look your parents up because they'll have more, they'll have more data and um, it has, so it has our addresses from Alabama, California, Michigan, and Virginia, all the places that we lived, which is really, really quite frightening. Yeah. Anyone have a presence on Spokio? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, oh. huh? That's all right. How um, how how off is the age? Okay. So interesting where they're pulling the data. But it still has. Really. But interesting how it keeps it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah oh yeah. <laughs> right, so here is, um, here is very similar. It, it will show on Google Maps where the house is as you drill down. Um, and all the possible phone and email addresses that people can then purchase. All right, I want to show you one more website that I really love. Um, and this is, uh, this is actually a better one. I think it's name. Did I type that right? Yeah. So this is namecheck.com. And if any of you want this information, just let me know, and I'm happy to email you the information. Um, if you want to know, if you want to create a really comprehensive social media presence, you can go to this site and look and see what, where your name is available. So like for me, all of my information is under either D-H-O-N-N-E-R or Deirdre Honor. And so here, if I look under D Honor, what it will do is it will check all the domains. No, I don't want to give Bitcoins. I, yeah, I know. We could have that conversation, too. So it will tell you all the domains that are available. Um, I own quite a few of the domains already, but there are still some that are available. 
And under some of the other sites like YouTube, Google+, Yelp, Basecamp, WordPress, PayPal, those are still available. So if somebody wanted to take the de-honor, they could on these, on these sites. So this is just somewhere, if you're really interested in social media and social media platforms, this is a great place to check. Yeah, yep, yeah. So some of the blogs I write, I have a personal blog, I have an HR blog, we have a cooking and wine blog, um, and some people wanted a Samson blog, but I said no, <laughs> I have too many blogs. So the other, um, the other site is, um, these are social, these are aggregators like Dogpile, and those are places that you can go, that search engines that will search search engines. Um, but the HowManyOfMe.com, the name check, and the Spokio are the three that I always like to talk about for different reasons. Any questions on this before I go, before I keep going? Okay. How many of you, any of you use Google Plus? Yeah? Okay. Um, I like Google Plus, obviously, because it's attached to my Google account or my Gmail account. And a number of employers actually do, will do recruiting fairs on Google+. So uh, some of the technology, like my husband's an engineer at GE Aviation, and they'll do recru recruiting um, fairs on, on Google+. So it's a place to have a presence. I don't think it's the top place to have a presence, but I think it's worth maintaining at least and putting some of the information out there. Any of you have a Google phone number? You know that Google has phone numbers, free phone numbers. One of the things, um, one, if, if you are job hunting and you want a dedicated phone number, you can use, it's free, you can sign up for a Google phone number and you can have that Google phone number forward to any phone you want. And what I like about it is if somebody calls you and leaves you a message, it will email you the, um, the, tra the voice, uh, the, the WAV file, along with a transcribed copy of the voicemail. And what I also like about this is, is when I worked in HR, when I would call people and I would get their like funny messages or their music, I'm not amused by the music. Um, it, it, you can create a very professional voicemail uh, when employers can call and, and if they're calling that number, you know most likely it's about an op a job. So, um, do you talk about uh, YouTube uh, resumes? Not initially. No, yeah. So for a while there was some conversation about whether or not resumes would go, um, would be better off on YouTube. I'm not a fan. I'm really not a fan at all. But there are some places, especially when people have done productions or art, and I'll talk a little bit about that on Pinterest too, um, where it could be you could highlight your work and we'll talk about LinkedIn and we're going to talk about terms of service But one of the things I like about YouTube is that if you've got something you want to highlight It's a really nice way or place to put it, but I wouldn't make it your your primary resume or work product um, How many of you run Google Alerts on your name? Okay, thank good good for you all right, so Google Alerts, uh, if you go to google.com slash alerts, you can set up an alert on your name. And the reason I do that, um, I have several alerts that run on my name because I like to know where I'm referenced online. Uh, I started it actually when I was writing in my HR blog because what people, what other bloggers would do would be to steal content so what I would do would be to embed my name somewhere in my article so that if somebody copy and pasted it and took the content, my name would show up in a Google alert and I would get notified. So when, I, when you think about the deep web or the invisible web and all the information that is yet to be indexed, I strongly encourage you to set up Google alerts so that if your name shows up somewhere online, you can, you're going to be notified and you can check it out. And I think that will become more important as um, anytime there's a password, there's an interested hacker. 
And so I always like to know if, if my information has gotten out, is it, is it safe? Um, and I, I would encourage you to do the same thing. So google.com slash alerts. And I do it on the, the correct spelling of my name, and I do it on the incorrect spelling of my name, too. Because so many people get it wrong. So how many of you check your Facebook settings? Oh, yay. Good for you. Um, Facebook is notorious for resetting their privacy settings. And so I have um, in my calendar, once a month, I check my Google or my Facebook privacy settings because they can reset. And going back to my friend's um, picture, had she checked the privacy on it and not allowed people to tag her, uh, there would have been eight or 900 fewer people who would have seen that picture of her. Um, once a month, at least once a month, please check your privacy settings on your Facebook account just to make sure um, that, there, that the information that you don't want out there isn't. One of the questions I get all frequently in this, when I do this topic is, should I let employers see my Facebook page? And I'm, I'm a huge social media fan, and I really do love Facebook. And so I never tell people not to have a presence unless there's a reason that they shouldn't. So when I'm talking about people who have been through a trauma or have had a stalker or have really good reasons for maintaining privacy, but if those aren't the cases, employers are probably going to look. So make sure that, that you have what people can see, what you want them to see. And, and what you don't want them to see is, is private. Um, another question I get is, should I friend my, my colleagues when I get into a job? And that's really a personal question. It really depends on you. I really like to keep work and um, friends separate. But working in HR, I'm incredibly sensitive to people saying, well, I wanted to be a friend of the person in HR, but she didn't want to be my friend. So personally, what I do is I will never reach out and friend someone, but I will always accept a friend request. And then they're going to hear about my dog, and they're going to look at my pictures, and they're going to see my wine. And, um, and that's really what my Facebook page is about. So yeah, questions before I go on? Yeah, sure. Um, so I know like a lot of people just for fear of like strangers accessing information about their personal lives that they don't want them to access will post most of their things as a private setting where like, their friends can see it. Yeah. And then when employers are accessing your Facebook page then they're not going to see very much. Yeah, that's true. And so, I mean, should we be intentionally making certain things public versus others? Like it's how do you draw the line on what you should be making public if that's something you're not comfortable doing? Right, and that's, and that's that personal call. So I wouldn't expect to be able to go to your Facebook page and say, oh, I should be able to see everything. Um, if you go to my Facebook page, you'll see stuff about work, you'll see stuff about my dog, but you won't see the stuff about my dad or my family, and, and that's intentional. You know, so some stuff I post publicly, other stuff I, I keep with friends. Yeah. So that it's 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 your call. Yeah. Anything else? All right, let me keep going. So LinkedIn. How many of you have a LinkedIn account? I better see all the hands go up. Yay. Okay. Um, you know you can customize the URL just like you can for Facebook. Um, that's the first thing I look at when I looked at a LinkedIn profile. You can change, you can get rid of all those letters and numbers at the end of it. And you can actually make it, you can customize it. Do you know you can customize Facebook too and Google Plus? Okay, you can do that too. Um, so those are some things that if you have a Facebook page and you want to customize it, you can. You, I strongly encourage you to customize your LinkedIn profile. Um, decide on your uh, picture. There is a photographer here today at 4 o'clock. Um, I'm not a huge fan of but I'm not, but I'm not looking for a job. Um, sometimes my dog is my, my picture. Um, <laughs> but you decide. You decide on the brand. You decide on the picture. You decide on the content. And one of the things I get from, questions I get, is should I include volunteer work? Absolutely, positively, yes. 
you are not just paid work. Your volunteer work, community work, classroom projects, everything that you've done that you want someone who's making a, an employment decision to know about and consider, you want on LinkedIn. So I'm going to talk about their terms of service, which have been referred to as draconian. And my girlfriend, um, Heather Bussing, wrote a, an article about why she dropped her LinkedIn account. Now, I'm not that concerned about their, um, their terms of service, but there was, a, there was a period of time where there were conversations about whether or not LinkedIn owned the right to the work products that people were uploading. So there is a place for you to put examples of your work. So PowerPoints or writing samples. And there was all kinds of back and forth with really smart people about who owned the right to those. Now, in the terms of service, um, the hyperlink there is actually a link to LinkedIn's blog that, where they talk about you own the right to your stuff. Again, it goes back to personal preference and what you're, responsive, what, what you're comfortable with because there are some employers who say, you know what, I'm not so sure that's true. And so what I do is I have links to the information that I would want employers to see. I don't upload examples of my work. I have hyperlinks to my blogs. But again, your call on what and what you're comfortable with. I don't think for any of us in the room, LinkedIn is going to come after us and say, wow, I really want your stuff. I don't think that's going to happen. At least my stuff they're not going to do. Um, but it's something to consider when you're uploading and you want people to see, see your work products. Okay, so custom, customize the URL. Everyone know what that means? So the, the last, okay, do it. It makes you look so much more professional. And when I look at somebody's LinkedIn account and it's not customized, like it's like having an AOL email address. It's kind of a little ding. So, <laughs> I'm glad you get that, because like so many people are like, what? AOL? <laughs> it's a terrible bias, but it's just true. <laughs> yeah, there is a way when you, and um, is it on here? Yeah, it's on your website. Oh, see, Rockstar, you. Yeah. So if Lori Lemon or anybody in career development can help you, and seriously, if you know there's a, a stampede, I can help you but I can't walk you through it up here because I'm not looking at it. And you can do Facebook too and you can do Google Plus. So it's the little things and it makes you look so, it really does look, make you look so much more professional. Does anybody here use Pinterest? Okay, I just hate, I don't get Pinterest. <laughs> I, and I try, I've tried and when I say that I get these like, oh, what? <laughs> um, but people love it. And there are some incredibly creative resumes on Pinterest. And then also some great resources um, on Pinterest as well about not only job hunting, but doing some really creative resumes. Um, anyone on Twitter? Anyone on ELO? Anyone even know what ELO is? No. <laughs> it's, like, it's like Twitter next gen. Um, Lots and lots of uh, companies will actually broadcast job postings on Twitter. So one of the things I encourage you to do, if there's a company that you're really interested in, and they've got a, a uh, if they're, they have a presence on Twitter, follow them. Follow them on all of the major platforms, um, Pinterest, Google+, LinkedIn, um, and if they have a Facebook presence, follow that there too because they'll usually put out um, information on job and job hunters and job seeking and um, interviewing. How many of you have your Twitter account protected? Okay. Um, there's a real, oh, how many of you are, you on Snapchat? Anyone on Snapchat? Okay, how many of you actually believe that those pictures on Snapchat go away? Okay. You all know they were hacked, right? Like three times and all those pictures really didn't go away. So if you're using Snapchat and you think those pictures go away, they don't. Um, and also if you use hashtags on Twitter and, you're, and you go to search.twitter.com, the things that you think are protected 
really are not necessarily protected. So again, that tweet lives on forever. Watch what you say online. That's, that's the takeaway here. So going forward, everything in, in paper needs to be really, really spot on perfect. Um, developing an online presence and maintaining it. So make sure that you keep on top of where your name appears, how you present yourself online, what you say, knowing that anything you put out stays there forever. Um, and then in person, I know we'll get to, um, we'll get to the in-person stuff, but one of the most important things too, as you go into a season of interviewing, when you sit down to interview, never let that be the first time the words come out of your mouth. Some of the worst interviews I've ever had, and HR people could actually do stand-up comedy, um, because we, we really have had some unique experiences in interviews. Um, uh, I had one example where I had a person bring her invisible friend. I, and um, I had another person who wondered why there were uh, snakes all over the walls. And, so we've had some really unique experiences, but one of the things that the best interviewers, the best candidates always come prepared, and they will have already talked about what they do well, why they're interested in the work, talk about their experience and their education. So by the time they get to me, they've rehearsed it and they've practiced it. So it doesn't sound rote, but it sounds um, confident and engaging. And that's my wish for you is that you're, that you're online and your paper and your in-person interviewing and job hunting goes really well. So thank you. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Hey, one final thing too for any student here. I will connect with you on LinkedIn. I mean, you can look at my Facebook page, but it's just wine and dogs. But LinkedIn, um, I, I probably get two to three recruiters a, a month who reach out to me to ask me to connect them with um, one of my LinkedIn connections. So any Calvin student, you are welcome to connect with me. And if you see someone in my network who you would like me to introduce you to, I am more than happy to do that. Yeah. OK, questions? Yeah. And if you've, been, if you've had like presence online for a long time yeah. and you've been somewhat relatively like active, yeah. and there have been, you're not sure of what's in your past like long ago, would employers care about stuff that's like you posted back in middle school or early high school as much as they would care about now? So I'm going to answer a different question. So let me, let me, and I'll get to that. But what I have found is that people who, who have an electronic presence in younger years usually use usernames that may not be appropriate for a job search. So if you're using your name, um, then probably not. I'd, I'd actually have somebody look at it. And, OK. So, so one of the other things when I was talking about the Google Voice, you know, getting a Google phone, yeah. um, you could also look at your, your email address. So. Um, I, I had a candidate who applied for a couple of jobs, and her email, oh, I've had some, I've had some doozies. Um, her email was misschatterbox at yahoo.com. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know that I want to talk to Miss Chatterbox. I mean, I would rather talk to, you know, Tarita.Johnson at yahoo.com. So look at your presence. So the, the two questions, are they going to care? I don't know. It depends on what you, what you wrote. If it's really innocuous and it's kind of just like middle school stuff, probably not. It's probably fine. If you really want to be certain, though, have a third neutral party look at it. Okay. Yep. And then decide if that's something that you want to keep going forward. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good question. Yeah. Um, speaking of being active and inactive, I personally have a lot signed up for a lot of different social media sites, but I'm definitely not active with most of them. Right. And so is it good to keep those accounts with those sites 
to get rid of them. I mean, just yeah. because there's nothing really on there, so I mean, I don't have anything to get rid of. But right. I, I get this question. This is another question I get quite a bit. Pick two or three and be really active. Like invest in LinkedIn. And if you love Pinterest, invest in Pinterest. You know, if you love Twitter, invest in Twitter. But pick a couple and focus your energy there. And if people find you on Google Plus or they find you on, you know, someplace where you're not really active, the more, so how search engines work, the more active you are, the more those sites are going to be at the top of the search if somebody's looking for you. So that's what I would recommend. I mean, who has time to like have 15 different platforms? You just don't. Would it also be good to maybe provide like connections to the social media platforms I am active on? Yes. Right. Giving people places to go. Yeah. So on LinkedIn, I have a, you know, I have a link to my Twitter account. Um, I don't think I have a link to my Facebook page. So yeah, good question. Thank you. Yeah. What else? Yeah. On the topic of volunteering. Yeah. A couple questions. First of all, what would you include in that realm? And second, what if you consider that more a part of your personal life, not something to boast about? Yeah, I know. This, uh, we're a terribly humble community, really. And the the first thing that happened, whoops, the first thing that happened to me when I when I moved here, was I had the darndest time getting people to talk about what they have done well. And in interviews, it was just horrible to get um, people to use I and not we. Um, so going, I'm going to go. I'll answer your question, and that that's really your call. You decide what you want to post. If I'm the employer. I would love to know what you've done. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> but you don't, it, and you don't have to. I mean, if you've got enough other experience, I mean, it's something that could be in your cover letter. So it doesn't have to be on LinkedIn. But if you want to put it there, the question I get is, should I leave volunteer work off LinkedIn? And my answer is always no, if you want to put it there. OK? I know that you're not crazy about that answer, are you? <laughs> I give you permission not to put it there. How's that? But keep going. I guess another thing is, what if you're at a point in your life where you don't have much official experience, and a lot of your time has been devoted to academics or extra sort of personal interests? Yeah. And you don't want your personal interests on LinkedIn? Well. Some of the stuff. I guess. Yeah, I guess it, so, it, all right, so here's, here's one of the, the problems, is that you've done way more than you think you've done. And when I sit and talk to students, that year, what year are you? This is my first year at Calvin, but you could say I'm a sophomore. Okay. So in the two years, you've done work. You've been in classes. You've done class projects. Um, you've written papers. You have, you have done things. So to think that you don't have any relevant experience is just flat out wrong. What I would encourage you to do is make sure that you're connecting with people in career development to help you articulate what you've done well. So getting it on LinkedIn and getting people like, like employers to be able to see it. Also, you're not, when you're just starting out, you're not going to have a really robust, it's like a resume. You're not going to have a you know, five or six page CV. You're going to have one page of education and experience, maybe some volunteer work if you want it, and then some other personal interests. So, so don't worry about not having so much, but you've actually, I think you've done more than you think. OK? All right. So you go talk to career development, and if I'm wrong, come back and tell me. <laughs> OK. Seriously, I'm, I'm good with feedback. What else? Yeah. Um, do you post things on your LinkedIn page, like articles and stuff? And if so, like, what would you recommend posting? Posting, do, what do I read or what do I post? Like, what, you can like, post things, like articles and yeah. stuff. Um, so part of my work, too, is, is Safer Spaces in Title IX. So I really uh, read a lot about um, trauma and violence, especially violence against women. And those are some things I post uh, personally and professionally. There is one website that you have to read. 
you absolutely, you cannot walk out of here without writing this down, and it's askamanager.org. Anybody read that? Okay. She is hands down the best writer, and she gets the best questions I've ever seen. Today's question was from an employee whose, em whose employer is making them all <laughs> test because his brother needs a liver transplant. I know. <laughs> It's unbelievable, but she gives the best advice I've ever read anywhere. So askamanager.org. I never, I never miss that. I never miss that. And I'll post her stuff all day long because one, it's, it's very funny and it will give you a really good glimpse into kind of what life out there could, <laughs> might be like. <laughs> So um, other things I post, I love to post about my dog. Um, and I um, also do a lot of volunteer work. Well, I do some volunteer work helping people find jobs, especially people who have been long-term unemployed. So I'll do some of that too. Yeah. What else? Yeah. Um, on LinkedIn, how far back would you say, like, Put it. Like, say I had a job in middle school or something. Yeah. How would I put that on my name? So, what was the job? Just like a tutor, like I tutored someone English. Yeah. So, that's a really interesting question. And the answer is going to be this is the great HR answer. It depends. Um, if you're an education major, major and you have been teaching since you were in middle school or grade school, I would definitely put that on because that tells me that you've been committed and passionate about that work for as long as you've been able to help. Um, if you're doing something else, it could be just in um, previous work experience without dates, you know, tutoring, you know, other, other kinds of jobs. So, yeah. But if I would, if, if that's been something you, you've been passionate about, I would do it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, feel free to disagree. Rita, Beth, <laughs> Meredith. Yeah. What else? What else can I answer? Yeah. Yeah, that's. Um, I have the. Uh, I post lots of things on Facebook that are politically charged. Yeah. And I was just wondering, is that something good to leave for prospective employers to find? Are you going into politics? Not really. I'm just really interested in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so here's what I would say. I I never like to say no because I don't know the exact nature of what you're, what you're posting. But what I would encourage you to do is find a neutral party and have them go through it with you and give a, a perspective, I'd be happy to do that. I know career development would be happy to do it and say, you know what, this is probably okay, this is probably not okay. And, and that's gonna be another, another personal call. Yeah. What are you looking Yeah, what's your major? Okay. Sometimes companies can sway politically, so mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I, right. I, I agree with her. Honey, yeah. you need to have somebody go through. So one of the things that I did that wasn't so smart in answering your question is um, a couple weeks ago, if you go to my HR Maven Twitter, I live tweeted my husband's phone call to Comcast. <laughs> Anybody had to call Comcast to work? Oh my goodness, um, <laughs> it was. It was comedic, and it is really funny. Now, am I proud of it? Not really, I probably probably crossed a couple of lines. Maybe it wasn't so professional, but it was really, really funny. And um, so those are the kinds of things where if I were job hunting, would I have live tweeted that phone call? Probably not. But in hindsight and looking at it, I want you to see some of my mistakes too. So if you go to the HR Maven, you can see my live tweets um, about the Comcast, his Comcast which was just epic fail. It was unbelievable. And they still haven't fixed the problem, but, but at least we have Comcast back. So, yeah. What else? Yeah. Is it okay to put extracurricular activities like, let's say, example, like member of the chess club? Because I, when I think of LinkedIn, I think of professionals. So yeah. Is it appropriate? Yeah. The chess club? Are you kidding? Yeah. Wow, smart, that's what I think right away. <laughs> Absolutely, any kind of club, any kind of interest, anything where you wanna highlight extra work, investment, 
um, connection. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a Christian. I don't know really how to phrase it, but I feel like especially at a Christian college, we might have a lot of opportunities that are like more like, like I don't know, maybe like clubs that are more like Christian or mm-hmm. like thing, yep. things that like show that like our religious background yeah. is like how do you, like to what extent do you present that self and to mm-hmm. what extent do you like, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I do. I'm saying? Yep. Okay. And I am unapologetic about my connection and my, um, my faith. So part of it is presenting it in a way that's neutral. So if you're an elder in your church or if you're engaged or you're leading a a Bible study or you're leading, you're running, you're you're engaged, you are, that's work I would want to see. And um, employers, especially, especially in Grand Rapids, that's not, that's not, but there are lots and lots of places that look at that and say, you know what? Regardless of the, the faith component of it, it's still leadership, it's still engagement, it's still investment. So, yeah. Yeah. What else? Yeah. Do people ever put, like, book secret? Do they what? Do people ever put book secret? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, mostly I find that on Goodreads. So anyone on Goodreads? Yeah, it's a so you can connect Goodreads with Facebook and it will and Twitter, um, but I've not seen that on LinkedIn. I mean, it could be areas of interest. So especially if like you were going into English or writing or um, so that could be appropriate. But yeah, Trita. You mentioned some sites we had heard of like Evo and these. Um, how do you keep up? How do you know what the new? How do I know? Um, <laughs> How some of the so um, one of the things that I do outside of work is I'm a beta tester for Google and Microsoft, and so I do a lot of um, I do beta testing for them, and so I get on these lists. I'm on two lists. One, I get all these people who want to send me free bro- books that are it's just awesome. I have all these free books and no time to read them. Um, but the other is I get invitations to try out these social media sites. So I got an invitation to Ello, which what's being videoed, um, don't waste your time. Um, but it's, it's fun to go look at them, you know, and, and, and then, you know, then there's Yik Yak and some of those other sites where it's just, if you don't have the courage to say it out loud, why are we saying it anywhere else? So, so this tweet lives on forever. So, yeah. What else? Twitter, the site that has ruined many a life. In I know. Really, truly. But save lives too, because for um, for a time when the Middle East, Twitter was the only site that wasn't down, and that's how how the West was getting information on what was going on in Iran and Syria. So the Secretary of State actually, there's a story, and I think it was 2010 or 11, where Twitter was going to do a big upgrade, and the te- the Department of State asked them to hold off, because it would have taken Twitter offline for a couple of hours, and they didn't want to do that. Yeah. So, good. Hey, I'll hang out. So if you have any questions, um, I also have cards. If you want to come see me, I'm always happy to talk to students. I don't get to do that too much, and I would love to do that. So thanks a lot for your time.